Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our family cooking session with Dr. Melanie Gillingham and Claire Held. Tonight, our hosts are going to help us make an FAOD healthy meal that the whole family will enjoy. So let's welcome our chefs for the evening, Dr. Gillingham and Claire. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be with you tonight. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our family cooking session with Dr. Melanie Gillingham and Claire Held. Tonight, our hosts are going to help us make an FAOD healthy meal that the whole family will enjoy. So let's welcome our chefs for the evening, Dr. Gillingham and Claire. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be with you tonight. Good evening, everybody. So Claire, you have to log out of Happen. Are you in there? Is that better? Can everyone hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, hi everyone. I'm not sure if, if Melanie would like to go first or I, um, but tonight we're going to make a healthy carrot soup that's great in the summer chilled or nice in the winter warm with some fresh bread um, from the FOD cookbook. And then a, another fun side meal is these rosemary and garlic sliders um, that are great options to serve at any party or with any guest, regardless if they are an FOD um, individual or not. So uh, I will just get going. We have limited time. Feel free to ask questions and Melanie will help you out. Um, just a quick note I want to make. The team at the Mito Action Group was so kind to say that I have an RD. I do not. The only one with the RD tonight is uh, Miss Dr. Gillingham. So <laughs> um, please refer all your super important, super smart, inquisitive questions to her and if Melody wants she can try to quiz me but uh <laughs> great thanks Claire I'm excited to see you get going yeah. so starting with our carrot soup huh uh yeah so I'm gonna try we have limited time so I'm gonna try to get a few things going at the same time um First off, because it just takes so long, because cooking with MCT oil, as any of you know that uses it, you have to cook at a really low temperature um, because of the smoke point, and that just has to do with the uh, uh, molecular <laughs> basics yeah. of it. Yes, it, it does is. smoke if you cook at a high happen. temperature. So yeah. I'm so curious, to... Claire, have you set your smoke alarms off before cooking with it? Oh, oh yeah, a bunch. It's really fun when the neighbors want to come and check out what I'm burning. <laughs> so, so first off, I'm just heating the pan to caramelize the onions. Um, so I got my MCT oil here, about a tablespoon and a half, and I've actually added a little bit of olive oil to bring up the uh, cooking temperature. And it'll just, you won't hear anything for a while because the onions they do take time to caramelize. We'll just... So one thing, Claire, that I've noticed that you do a lot with your cooking, which is really fun, is you add just a little bit of olive oil for, for flavor. Um, so that really kind of helps the MCT, because MCT doesn't have a lot of taste. So do we like to use a certain kind of olive oil or just one that's uh, really richly colored? What do you look for usually? You know, I I, uh, I go with affordable but also good tasting. Right now I got this lovely stuff from Morocco, our friends brought back. Um, oh, nice. And I personally really like it. It has a very clean taste. Um, but yeah, it, it just helps to, to add flavor. And then also you don't have to add as much oil in the end product because you're not worrying about having to make it not stick or burn. Um, and a lot of people, you know, might might have the urge to do that because no one wants to clean a super difficult pan. Um, so while these get going, these will probably take about 20, 25 minutes. 
I'm gonna get the pan going for the soup, um, which if I turn on the right burner, that always helps. So again, in here we have our base, some MCT oil, about a tablespoon. Uh, we will get that warmed up again on low temperature. I just always cook low and slow. Um, and we will then grab our garlic. I got two big cloves right here. Um, and for someone with low vision, uh, you probably have seen this on the Food Network. It helps a lot. You just take the flat side of a knife, like this bad boy. <laughs> Smash it, move these out of the way. We're now nice. bare this over here. Yeah. And then peel, and then we don't have to worry if you can't see that skin or not because um, those shells can be pretty darn thin. So then just giving them rough chop. Um, and, and garlic has good, uh, good antioxidant blocking capabilities. Yes, yeah, and it makes things taste good. <laughs> and it, exactly, it makes things taste good. So on your stove, Claire, when you say low, are you, I, I know my stove has numbers on it. Are you looking for like a 10 is high? And I, I usually, if you're cooking low, is that like a three? Is that a two? Perfect. Um, you are exactly right. I. I'm cooking with gas today. Um, if I was cooking on electric, I would just do like a one. Okay. And um, this, I don't know if you can see the flames, but yep. they probably be about a one. Got it. And as you can tell, stuff is starting to sizzle. So, yeah. Um, but how is... I mean, I know our, our lovely guests can't talk, but I hope everyone's having a good summer now that people are getting vaccinated and things are opening up. Yes, we're, we're starting to open up a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about when you're thinking about making dinner, what are some of the things that you kind of think about when you're planning meals? So um, my, my dietitians might want to cover their ears, but I always think about percentage versus the exact uh, calorie fat per gram content. That's so great. I like to think about, okay, what have I done that day? Was I more physically active that day? Was I more sedentary? Um, did I go out to lunch with friends? Did I eat at home? Did I run out of the door really early because I was running late for work and just have a lip of start and a latte to go? Or did I have time to get a really good solid full breakfast? Um, and so when I think of dinner, I always go, okay, do I, what kind of wiggle room do I have? Um, and that's, that's basically what I go with. So I also like to try to think of, okay, I'm gonna have bread. Let's try to have some veggies. You know, the more veggies I can cook, the better. Um, because I'm not a huge salad fan, so if I can get my veggies the other way, I will. So you think about your veggies. I, I One thing I love about this soup is all the veggies that are in it. So it's kind of got lots of variety. Um, when I'm planning meals, I also kind of think about, you know, what veggie did I have last night? How do I mix it up for tonight? Do something different. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it is pretty loud over here at the moment. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk up. <laughs> give any good advice or I have my lovely mother being a filmographer in the background. Um, and she can relay anything to me if Melanie has questions. Okay, so if we're suddenly cut off, you will know why, because I'm manning the computer now. Okay, sounds <laughs> good. But like when Claire was younger, and um, like if she went to a friend's house for the day, um, I would, because I didn't want her friends to be worried about what they were gonna feed her, 
or anything, I would always send her with really good low fat treats to share with everybody. And then when she would come home, I would ask her what she had and then really try to balance it for with that. So for example, you know, if they'd fed her a hot dog that wasn't a turkey dog, our meals for the next, you know, two days would be just Lower about fat. no fat. Right. Um, to try to just balance it out. Yeah. Um, as she got older, she could advocate for herself really well and and um, people started being way more thoughtful about like um, having uh, low fat options, options, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that worked out good. But then it would be like, okay, if you had a cupcake at a friend's birthday party, then um, let's make sure that you know tonight for dinner we're going to have lots of um, low fat fat pasta and some fresh fruit and uh, not a lot of um, things that might have uh, oil or frosting or anything else in them. So that was kind of the balance. And that was just what we ended up doing over the years to make it as easy for Claire and for her friends. And then as she went off to college, she figured out how to balance it out for herself. And, and there will be days where you know, you're going to go to that family reunion or you're going to be traveling um, and there's not necessarily the perfect low fat option, but there are options. Um, so what did you, what did you just add, Claire? Oh, so I just added cumin. I don't know how much you can see with me moving around. So <laughs> we my, can see really well. We can see lots of stuff. <laughs> yes, my my Pam was talking. I added cumin. I got the ground beef out of the okay. fridge in this bowl just to get up to room temperature. Um, the reason I do that is not because I like breaking health codes, but uh, I want the meat to cook evenly. And if it's all the same temperature, I know it will. Especially since we're going to be mixing the cheese into the ground beef, so you don't have to use as much. Um, and it gets more evenly distributed for flavor. Great. So there's a there's a question in the chat that I'm going to try to address real quickly. Yeah. It's asking if C7 can be cooked the same as MCT oil. And uh, actually, there was recently a, a project that Ultragenics did to look at C7 baked in in muffins, and it was fine. So uh, I've used it cooking in in low temperatures like Claire's demonstrating and it's been fine. So I think the answer is yes. Although have we cooked this carrot soup with the C7? I, I don't know that we have, but for the most part, C7 can be used the same as MCT. All right, now what did you add? So I added uh, cumin, coriander, and curry powder. And curry powders are actually just blends of different uh, spices. So really it's up to how you want to cook and what flavor. I'm heading over to grab some ginger because I didn't prep that. <laughs> Which you don't want that bag in your soup, that'd be a little weird. <laughs> um, so I got a half teaspoon of ginger going in. Um, and you could use fresher ground, but the ground is what I got today. Um, and then I also, when I make dinners, I try to think, okay, if I'm having guests over and, you know, they're newer, I met them as adults and not kids I've known growing up for years, and they're new to my type of cooking, what can I make that is fairly, um, fairly cohesive across the board? So... So soups are always great options in winter. Um, roast chickens can be great. I just wouldn't eat the dark meat. Your guests can enjoy that. They're gonna love it. You can always make a lower fat gravy on the side. I typically don't do that um, just because I don't think about eating that way. <laughs> but, but there's always modifications. And what I say is just find a favorite cook you have and start experimenting with their recipes. Um, 
that's the best way to find out if, if it's doable. And there, are, there are recipes that aren't convertible. They're just not. I've tried. Um, and that's okay. You just stay away. Or that's the one meal a year you're like, I'm going to save up all my calories for the next two weeks. <laughs> so I don't know if mom can tilt the camera, what you guys can see, but the onions. Oh, they're starting to caramelize. Starting to turn. Yeah. And another another thing I thought of, which I truly don't know why I didn't think of this before, but you can always add water if you're worried about things sticking. Um, mom would to tilt the camera mm -hmm. in the pan. These onions are starting to stick a little. Luckily, we have lots of liquid we're adding today. But if I was doing something that was um, Sorry. a lot more, you know, cream based or low fat milk paste i wouldn't necessarily add it so so next i am going to be grabbing my carrot i prepped for you guys so just big old chunks i'm tossing in carrots are great in vitamin a and beta carotene um one thing you need to be cognizant of is melanie will tell you it's a fat soluble vitamin so you're going to need the MCP oil will help in that transport of that vitamin um, through the body. And they're great for our eyes, eye health, cell health, all that good stuff. So another question came in about how much olive oil. And, and I would say, I'm trying to remember in some of our recipes that are in the cookbook, like if you did a tablespoon of MCT, you might do a teaspoon of olive oil, right? Was that yeah. about? about the ratio that you would use? Yeah, I do about a half, and it depends what size of group I'm cooking for. Now, because this is a huge pot, I might even go up to a whole tablespoon, depending. Um, but yeah, I always say just add, and you can even just, you know, add like a fourth of a teaspoon at a time until you're like, you know what, that's fine. I'm a little nervous at this point at adding more. And, a lot of recipes, you do not need as much oil as they say you do, um, which I don't ever speak to, but it just, it's not necessary. So, um, all right. So we have our carrot sauteing and now you're going to add the tomatoes. Yep. I, so I have uh, about seven to eight large carrots here. I washed, peeled. Um, and then now I'm adding one can of chopped tomatoes in water. Uh, that's the other thing when you're grocery shopping, make sure you buy canned products that are in water. Sometimes, not tomatoes, but some things will sell them in oil, especially like tuna fish. Um, I just like to make sure they're not. And then to that mixture, uh, we're going to add vegetable broth. Now my mom, she doesn't care the brand. I actually get very picky about my vegetable and my chicken broth. I really like the Pacific. I just think it has a cleaner taste. Um, I also I also like it in a box much better than in a can. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think? I try to do low sodium too because I know I'm going to be adding salt right. in my cooking. Right. Um, and we just once again we don't we don't need that much extra. Yeah, one trick I definitely have gone to box is for my broths because they just have a cleaner, less metallic taste than in the can. So why this is sauteing, I'm going to get the ground beef started um, for our little sliders, little friends. So, so over here I have a uh, platter and I just put some wax paper on it so that when I make my patties, if I was prepping this ahead of time for a party, I'd probably make them ahead and stick them back in the fridge. And it's so much easier once they're formed to, to do that. Um, so I, I'm uh, looking at another question, Claire, and yeah. I actually can't remember what does caramelized mean? I mean, I know what a caramelized onion is is but i'm not sure i know i remember what is the definition of caramelized so caramelized is when the sugars break down and that's to right point they kind of solidify um, and they they eventually they turn those fiber brown. brown yeah, yeah. they're I just they make it sweeter 
I think it's a, I, now that I, you mentioned it, it's some sort of reaction with the sugars and the heat that, that turn them kind of, of uh, a brown color. So I think mm -hmm. that's, and, and chefs talk about caramelizing things and it's yeah. just cooking long and slow. Like yeah, long and slow. And it just adds another layer of flavor because when you're cooking low fat, especially with people that don't eat low fat all the time, that's the number one complaint you're going to hear is, well, no, that doesn't taste. It's kind of bland. And it's just because they're not used to it. They don't have that palate. Um, and so any way you can add an extra layer of flavor, bring out that sweetness of those what ribose and sucrose sugars, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have a better time. And it just looks prettier. Mm -hmm. Looks more professional. <laughs> we have some other we have some other questions coming in. So I'll talk a little bit about the asking about fat soluble vitamins and MCT oils. So um, there are four vitamins that are soluble, fat soluble. And by definition, that means that you typically find them in the fat components of those foods. They're vitamin A, D, that's the sunshine vitamin, E, and K. Um, and those vitamins, you have to have a little bit of fat in your food for them to be absorbed. Um, I, I've looked at this a little bit to see if patients who follow really low fat diets have low fat soluble vitamins in their blood. And um, for the most part, they've been fine. And if you take a multivitamin, they probably have A, D, and E in them. But if you if you do use, you know, carrots, um, add a little bit of, a, there's probably a little vitamin E, not so much in olive oil, but in walnut oil or, or canola oil, you get a little vitamin E. If you just use a little bit of that, you're going to be able to absorb those, those vitamins. So that's what that means. Um, I'm not, so, I don't know that the MCT helps as much as the other oil, but it's, Cooking it the way Claire is cooking it, you're going to have nice absorption. So now it looks like you've chopped some fresh rosemary to put in the beef. So I got rosemary going on. I'm grabbing a little salt and pepper to add to our meat. Um, Wonderful. The onions are still cooking. We're still progressing there. Uh, this will not be an exact science. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my fourth teaspoon. Once again, you can always, the best and worst part about salt is it's pretty strong, it's pretty salty, but you can never take it away. And that can be really unfortunate. <laughs> but um, I know, but seasoning it, as you mentioned, you know, if it's low fat, sometimes people complain it's bland and, it, and, and good seasoning can really um, make it taste good. So. Yeah. And the best part about seasoning, I mean, there's zero fat, there's zero well, almost there are net carbs in it, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, just you add, you make the flavors you want. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, we also have pretty easily at hand to Australian seasoning. It's a, it's another seasoning. <laughs> it has MSG in it supposedly, but I don't know. I like it. It tastes good. <laughs> Um, so that that's often can be used, but I like the cleanness of salt and pepper. One of my favorite cooks is Barefoot Contessa, so um, she just uses very clean ingredients. Also, one of the best parts uh, that we talked about in the, which this is what it looks like when you're cooking with someone with low vision. There we go. <laughs> um, when you are traveling, you get to try all different foods. And don't be afraid to try. You know what? Because I have I've tried pork gras. I have tried amazing paella in Spain um, that probably was not cooked perfectly low fat, but I tried it. And then I'm like, I'm going to go home and try to figure out how to at least get close to a replication. I love paella. Yeah, allow yourself forgiveness. You don't have to be perfect every day. I am not. And I definitely have gone to those football parties and have partaken in some food I normally would not, which I don't keep in my house, but um, it still can be fun. So I'm just mixing the meat. The carrots are softening. They're not quite perfect yet. My onions, they're still caramelizing. They're not fully golden brown yet. 
Um, the meat, I don't want to play with too much because if I break up the fibers too much, they'll get tough. Um, so I play with them enough to make them nice and juicy. And one of the things um, years ago, we couldn't always find like low fat um, ground beef. And so I used to get ground chicken breast or ground turkey breast. And you don't want to just get ground turkey or ground chicken because those can actually be higher in fat sometimes than low fat ground beef. And then I used to mix it with the ground beef so that you would have the flavor of a hamburger patty, or you could add it to spaghetti or something else for a protein, and yet still keep the fat content really low. I think it's it's definitely gotten easier to find the really low fat ground beef, but it, yes. you're right. In the beginning, it was, it was hard. And my grocery store almost always carries ground turkey breast, which is really low in fat, so you can do that. That's a good good point. Oh yeah, ground turkey is great. I also uh, normally, you know, for a, a, a smaller audience, I might, I typically do these burgers as a lamb burger, um, but, but that's that's a meat that's a lot more um, personal you know, preference. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and and lamb is the same way. You can get it really lean. Um, or it can be full of fat. So you just want to look. Um, I always try to do at least the highest I will go of lean is 97% uh, lean, no fat. Any more than that, I just feel like I'm having to add as much fat back in to. So it doesn't food. stick, right? Yeah. And so that's just a good way to monitor. That's one of the things I also think about when I'm cooking is I go, okay, so I, I'm making a meal, but it also depends what are you cooking it with? Because sometimes you can buy a product, say like a, a barbecue sauce or something. And if you don't look at the ingredients, well, you could be adding fat you weren't anticipating just because it's so common in the food industry that we supplement or extend our products with additional fats. Um, and sometimes extra sugars we don't need. Trust me, I'm pro sugar. I love my carbohydrates. I'm a carbaholic, but um, there are times I just don't need it. So I just added the garlic uh, too close to the ground beef. So, so far in there we got salt and pepper, uh, fourth of a teaspoon of pepper, eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We got about a tablespoon of rosemary, finely minced, and then one clove of garlic. Um, and then next, da -da -da. now Melanie, you can back me up on this one. So this is Gruyere cheese. It's a white cheese. It's uh, harder and in our family rule, we always have our rule, the wider the cheese, the harder, the lower fat it can be. So um, I've made these before with lamb using gorgonzola, super good, but that's a lot more fat than I would say getting from the scurrier cheese. And scurrier is very strong, um, so you don't need them that much. I probably grated about a half cup here, I'm using about a fourth. And one of the reasons I came up with doing it this way is because a lot of times you get burgers and you just get a greasy piece of cheese slapped on top. And it's like, okay, well, I like the flavor, but I don't need that much. This way you get the flavor without having to get a ton of the extra fat. So and another question came through that um, someone's kids love to eat raw carrots. Are they getting the same nutrients? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether you eat carrots raw or whether you eat them cooked, they have the same vitamin A and beta carotene. So either way is a great option. So we got a helper trying to help. Oh, it's great. So um, one of the things one of the things I really like about um, how you cook, Claire, is how you build the layers, build layers of flavor into everything, and then how you use you know just a little bit of olive oil to extend the flavor, just a little bit of a of a cheese to and mix it in so that it kind of builds those flavors. I think that that kind of um, is an ex exciting way to cook, and and I bet you it makes it taste really good. Thank you. So um, 
in this pot, as we can see, we got the garlic and the onion sauteing. We added the cumin, the coriander, the ginger, I'm forgetting one, um, curry powder, <laughs> and like one of the main ingredients, um, and carrots and the tomatoes. Now I'm gonna add the chicken broth. So they're not completely tender yet, but that's okay. They're gonna be cooking while we build our burgers. So um, this is, this one whole thing is four, four cups. And it is 32 ounces. I'm gonna do a little quick mash my head there. Um, okay. And this makes a lot of soup. You're gonna feed a lot of people. It freezes really well. So when I'm extra lazy and I don't want to cook at all, I will make this. Um, and then any leftovers, pop it in that freezer. So, and then I'm adding two more cups, which is about half the, the stock. So I just turned off the heat and my onions. We'll get these, get these tossed. Um, and the reason I know they're done is we're definitely seeing caramelization, but I'm also getting that burnt smell. Right, I can, I can see the steam and the nice brown color. Yeah. Yeah, and, and normally, we got 45 minutes. Normally I'd probably add water and keep them going another five to 10 minutes. Um, but we're just gonna get these off the heat and let them cool down. Take a chill out moment. So. Beautiful. Okay. There we go. That's done. Our pan, we no longer, oh, we're going to use it later. So I'm just going to leave it away so I don't burn myself. Um, our soup is, is going. We just want to get it bubbling. And I've done the soup ways where I blended it and I've also let it just be chunky. Sometimes chunky soup is the best. Um, we have our lovely zucchini over here and squash. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I'm so bad. I do not know the difference between a zucchini and a squash. Um, they look the same to me. Well, other than color, I don't know that there is much of a difference. I think they have pretty similar. I mean, they're obviously different plants, but they're pretty similar in nutrients. So, but I love zucchini and yellow squash. I went to the farmer's market this morning and, and got some. So they're hitting this, they're hitting in season here in the Northwest. They're so good. And another great side dish you can do um, for friends, like an hors d'oeuvre, is you just pop these in like half a tablespoon of MCT oil. Um, let them saute and get caramelized like you did your onions. It's going to happen much quicker, probably five to 10 minutes. And then you just sprinkle like not even a tablespoon of Parmesan and it melts and a little bit of ground cracked pepper. Oh, so good. I love it. So I'm just adding, I'm chopping and adding the zucchini. work with Melanie and her RDs over there making this book because it's like you have these ideas but then when you really break down like what's in them it's it's pretty fascinating um, what you can get if you just plan a meal if you just you know take that time I mean we all we all get busy there's definitely those nights I open the spaghetti jar and toss in some noodles but um, I really like cooking for people that's, that's my happy place. So Claire, when you're planning meals, do you usually like sit down and plan say on the weekend for the week or kind of how do you, how do you go about planning meals? Um, you know, I've gone back and forth so many times when it's just me, I just go like, okay, what do I want the next three days and grocery shop based on that? Um, I'm pretty lucky in West Seattle, we have truly 10 grocery stores. It's absurd. Um, but when when I'm over here or I know I have guests coming, I really like to sit down and plan out the whole menu from 
what's my starter, what's my appetizer to what's my main course. Um, winter time, I do lots of like stuffed acorn squashes, um, onion soup, uh, you know, low fat, um, fettuccine with smoked salmon is a really nice, nice meal for guests. Um, yeah, I just, it really depends. I mean, just like you guys, you, you've got, you've got your way. Um, but yeah, I, and then I always ask, like uh, a lot of the pandemic when I was seeing my, my family over here, cause we all live very close to each other um, and we're all very, very careful. I got to spend a lot of time back here. It was kind of like, okay, well, what do we all want to eat? Um, and right. one of the important facts, so my brother is a, non-carrier, non-affected uh, individual. He does not carry the l gene, nor does he express it. Um, so when you create meals, you need to think about those other family members in mind. So maybe, you know, you you can cook low fat for the whole family and make sure it's all inclusive. You know, your, your son who's unaffected or daughter they can still have a great dinner if your child is affected can and vice versa. There were times I knew I, he wanted like, I don't know, um, homemade chicken nuggets that my grandma would make us. And I went, Oh, I can't eat those. So you just, you find, you find ways and then you'll become better able to, uh, determine and judge your own tolerance. And, and be more flexible. Yeah, and over time, also her brother and her dad and I all got so used to eating low fat, which 30 years ago, not too many people talked about the amount of fat in foods or diets, but we got so used to eating it that whenever we'd have a meal out or eat somebody's you know regular fried chicken or something, we'd all think that it tasted too fatty. So we all ended up um, liking this way of eating much, much better. And it certainly is much healthier for you too. Yeah. So a couple of things I think, I do tend to um, plan meals for my family, typically on the weekend thinking, you know, what's, what's our week look like? And um, I try to mix it up. So mm -hmm. we, I try to have, maybe one or two nights where we're making a dinner that's um, primarily vegetarian. So maybe a bean night or a pasta night that's not really a meat focus. And then I might have another night where like the sliders I'll plan on a, a one night a, a, a week of um, red meat, um, incorporating some fish every once in a while so, um, mm -hmm. would be a way to, to mix it up. Um, and then maybe chicken on a night. So just thinking about kind of varying that. And then, um, as you mentioned, I always am thinking about how to incorporate more vegetables into um, a meal. What vegetable we're going to put with the main dish or how to make the vegetables shine and be the star of the meal. And, and to that point, so I, um, one of the tricky things about l -chat or any FOD disorder, quite frankly, is balancing that energy need um, versus what can you do. So I, I even tried to be a vegetarian for a while. I had a roommate who was a vegan. Um, and it just it doesn't give you enough enough uh, kinetic, you know, kinetic energy or uh, k calories. Um, to really sustain. So not to say you can't have vegetarian meals, you totally can. Um, and I definitely do that, that just so I, when I feel proud of myself, I'm like, oh, look how much vegetables I ate today. It can be bad tomorrow. And, and uh, you know, go to a Thai restaurant with friends. But um, uh, yeah, just it, it truly, it's a balancing act. And the more you cook and the more you do this, the more, the more you'll know what works for you and works for your family. So we have a couple of questions that I'm going to go back to. Um, so someone talked about salmon and that they've been told it's high in fat and that they shouldn't eat it. And that is true. It's higher in fat than some other types of fish. I would say, I think we have a salmon recipe in our cookbook, Claire. I, I, mm -hmm. I would 
grilling it or something like that does help some of the, the fat drip out. But if it's a small portion, the type of fat in salmon is the fish oils are actually really good for eyes and brain. So a little bit of fish um, once a week, twice a month can really provide some other, um, some other benefits with um, DHA and some, and some fish oils. So I wouldn't say a big portion because it does have more fat than other fish, but a, a small, small piece of salmon. Now I can say that easily since we live in the Northwest and we have access to it and it might be harder for other people in other parts of the country. And I always try to do around four ounces. Normally restaurants will do six to eight ounces. Um, but four ounces, that's, that's plenty of those essential fats and you get the flavor. Um, you can also think like a lot of times balsamic is really common in things and there's lots of oil. And um, like a balsamic salmon is really good or even a halibut, that's a really low fat, firm white fish, um, very accessible these days. You can, you can buy things like, um, it's called balsamic glaze, and it used to only come out of Italy, now Trader Joe's sells it. And, and that's just a cooked down, reduced version of a balsamic vinaigrette without the oil. And um, so you can stretch things, you know, mix that with your MCT oil or whatever oil you use for MCAD, SCAD, um, CPT2, whatever you have. And, and and just try. I grilled peaches with some balsamic on it. Oh, that's perfect dessert. So another question came up, and I think this is a good point. So when you're adding, you know, two tablespoons of MCT, do you count that whole two tablespoons towards your daily uh, amount that you're trying to get? And the answer would be no. So that no. soup that you're making, Claire, how many people would? It, how many servings do you think it would serve? Oh gosh, you know, probably six if you're using a big old soup bowl and you could get away with 10 if you're just using, you know, small, small. like right. fourth cup. Um, right. So I would take, so in that case, I would take the tables, the, the two tablespoons of MCT and divide it by eight, say, and that would be your serving that you would count towards your um, allotment for your, your goal for MCT or Jajolvi for the day. So you want to think about the number of servings. Our cookbook does that. We kind of divide it into servings and say how much per serving um, yep. to help with that. Ooh, it's bubbling. It is. It is. We're, we're cooking. <laughs> yep. Technical error. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Looks so, great. Yeah, you can just see there's, there's lots of color going on here. One of the ingredients I have in the background you don't see is a cilantro. Um, that's definitely optional. I do have family members that aren't big fans of it. Um, but I, anything like a fresh herb, you want to add at the end so it doesn't get totally wilty. Um, but, but yeah, and, and uh, yeah, there's just lots of fun things. One of the things is little kiddos, we have, well, I'm not a little kid, um, <laughs> kids, they have much newer and younger taste buds on their tongue. And the salty, which is, remember it's right, it's towards the back of your tongue and sides and sweet is towards the front. So your child might prefer one dish over the other and it's just good to say, you know what, we're gonna try it, but if they don't wanna eat it, don't make it into a fight. I was really lucky, I, I didn't, I didn't grow up with, with food being a fight. Um, and that's probably what inspired me to be more flexible in what I eat or cook or, or do, so to speak. So you've shaped your um, meat patties. They're still coming yeah. to room temperature? Yep, so I'm just letting them rest for a little bit after you work meat. Uh, very technical terms here. You just let it kind of settle and re regroup itself. Um, and then when I add it to the heat, that way I know it'll cook evenly. I wanted to make sure they're all about the same portion. And um, so these look like they're probably between three and four ounces of hamburger meat per patty, uh, which since I'm using ground beef is plenty. Right, uh, but it's a nice small portion size. So it'd be much smaller than like what you would get in a restaurant. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. And and the other thing we're not doing here today is we're not adding a ton of mayonnaise. We're not adding oil spray oil to the buns before we put them on the grill. And um, one of the big things when you go out to eat in a restaurant is you just want to pretend that the restaurant is going to use as much butter and oil as they can to ensure that they don't have to scrub those pots and pans. <laughs> they're, they're cooking all day long and their dishwashers don't want to be, you know, standing over the commercial dishwasher using scrapers. Um, so it is always appropriate to say, you know, no oil or butter on my buns, um, not toasted is really an easy way to say it. Um, you know, no cheese is fine. Say dressings on the side. Um, a lot of restaurants just go crazy with their salad dressings, especially when you're doing a salad. Um, yeah, just, just quick little, quick little tips. And I will say other countries are so prideful in their food. I mean, you go to France and they'll practically tell you the chicken's name who laid that egg this morning. Um, so you, you can totally be confident. And if you are just, you know, cognizant enough to learn a few words in their language, um, that's always really helpful. Like Jean Bone is ham and I knew in France you guys there for 10 days my first time and every single day I was like, jump on! Yes. I had no fat that I could get easily. Right. Okay, so you have about 10 minutes. Okay, so we got, got some time here. I'm going to get the pan warm for the burgers. Um, and I don't know, I, I apologize guys, if if I don't have time to blend the soup because it's quite not quite soft enough. 45 minutes pretty quick and that's okay and um, but what I am going to do is I am going to add uh, with this this is about a tablespoon of MCT right into the pan a little less um, and then I'm just going to again low heat over here get my pan warm and I'm just going to do one of these burgers to show you and then in both of our kitchens, Claire's home and my home, we have the MCT oil and the olive oil just out on the counter. And the MCT oil is the large uh, squirt bottle of it. And the olive oil is the little tiny bottle that you have to measure out. So <laughs> it's a good reminder of what we're doing. So yeah, so I'm just taking one of my burgers. I feel the heat coming off and I'm just gonna add it the pan. Once again, we're cooking so low, you're not going to hear that automatic sizzle. And because I've done too much uh, food stuff and food management training, I'm going to wash my hands for the 10th time. <laughs> and I always say I like to see my friends and my family who cook for me to have cracked hands because then I know their, their hands are drying out and being washed too much. <laughs> It's kind of good, um, good practice during COVID anyway, right? Oh yeah, for sure. So the, the hamburger over here is bubbling away. And my, my soup is softening. And I'm going to get the towel out. Kind of move the soup over a little bit for you guys so you can See the pan better. Get this out of the way. Melanie, if I'm not wrong, ground beef's supposed to be between 165 and one. About it, right? Yes, 165 sounds great. I mean, you know these temperatures better than I. I've, I always have to look it up on my chart. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, now you can actually buy a smart thermometer that's connected to your phone, yes. and it can tell you everything about it. I mean, the tech industry is really making our lives far too simple. We need a normal spatula here. Yeah, and the fun part of COVID this year, I started uh, slowly developing new recipes. So we'll see, maybe in the next six months, I'll, I'll start putting some stuff out there. Um, That'd be great. 
But I always, I always like to keep in mind, you know, cook for yourself, number one. Make sure it's healthy and that you can eat it. But also cook for that guest of yours. They'll, they'll want to eat what you eat. They will. So one question is, um, Pam, can you talk about how you decided on a squirt bottle for MCT? <laughs> well, out of all of the MCT bottles that I have ordered through prescriptions and pharmacies imported from Canada over the years, I finally found one on Amazon that is actually prescription grade MCT oil that came with a squirt top. And it was like, oh, this is so much easier than trying to measure out. So what I would do is I would measure how much a squirt was. And then I knew like, okay, two squirts, there's a tablespoon. Right. So it was just way easier. But on, um, well, the great thing has been that MCT oil is now like very in style and people put it in their coffee for energy and everything else. The other thing for me that was a little scary, uh, probably like people who have gluten um, problems, is that as soon as something gets popular, you have to really be careful of who's making it. Is it the real stuff? Is it prescription grade? It's not just being advertised or put out by you know the local health food store and maybe it's not truly MCT oil. So um, that was always part of the trying to be as careful as possible. So uh, now I'm just adding small bunch of cilantro. I turned the heat off on our soup since we're getting low on time. And this just, once again, any, we've heard this from Food Network, professional chefs everywhere. The more fresh herbs you use, the more flavor. And I mean, this just kind of gives it that, that Spanish feel to it. I don't know if the person finds cilantro. Reminds me of like a Mexican dinner or something. Yes. Looks beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful color. And what I'm probably going to do with enough time, I'm going to transfer it over and I have an immersion blender. We can oh, see. Oh, gotcha. Then. Yeah. Right. Let's get that burger assembled. So, Mom, if you mm -hmm. follow me over here. Okay. So we got our hamburger on a cute little slider. And for guests, I would probably post this, but uh, we're not gonna do that today. Over here, I have, I have about a half tablespoon. You can skip this. You never have to do exactly what I do. Do what works for you. Half tablespoon of fat-free mayonnaise. Uh, and this is pesto I made last summer with MCT oil, olive oil, and basil. Um, and maybe not even an eighth cup of pine nuts. Pine nuts are super high in fat. But I'm just going to mix it. And this is going to be my dressing for my burger. So when you make it last summer, how did you store it over the... Um I just... I uh, put it in these little Dixie cups and I put it in the freezer. And yeah, I freeze mine in ice cube trays so you can pop out your, your yeah. cube of, of pesto. That looks delicious. Yeah. Oh, and it's so good. And once again, you don't need a lot. So I am probably going to be adding about a tablespoon, eh, three fourths to a <laughs> tablespoon. Got it. So and fat free mayonnaise and then an MCT based pesto. Yep, we got our brushes. I do not have oregano, but let's find those onions we worked really hard on making. Yes, those caramelized um, onions. Here are those golden brown onions. We're just going to add to the top. Nice. And the nice part about this size is your little kids can eat it. The grown-ups can have two or three. <laughs> Don't have arugula ready for you guys, so sorry about that. But oh, that looks lovely, Claire. That nice. Our little burger. Yay! Yeah. Soup. <laughs> Pull that out. Gosh. Um, oh four minutes. Okay, we got four minutes. We can do this. We can slide things over. Um, 
And I am happy to stay a few minutes later over time. I know uh, this this stream yard is really good. It doesn't necessarily kick us out all at once, um, like Zoom does. So if you, again, have any questions or you want Melanie to explain something in more detail, um, please, please do jump on in and ask. So now you're going to blend it to make it smooth? So, yes. Um, so, funny story, in college, <laughs> I was cleaning my fun new pink immersion blender, and I sliced my finger open. Oh, dear. And, but you know what? The emergency room loved it. They thought, this is the most fun story we've had all day. But nowadays, these guys have automatic locks, so you can't actually do anything to yourself unless you unlock it which is quite nice. I have my, I got an immersion blender um, like 30 years ago and I still use it all the time. I love making soups with this. And this soup actually would even qualify as a vegan soup because we don't have any dairy Oh, the traders. Okay. That looks great. Yeah. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to make it perfectly pureed. Because if it's perfectly pureed, your friend's going to know who made this. <laughs> I'm going to grab a bowl just to show you guys what it looks like. We got a label here. Here's the trade Okay. And we have a label. Oh, I'm on wrong door. Okay. I don't have Barefoot's backup crew helping me. So. And the best part about cooking with lots of vegetables, your dinner plate will always be pretty. Lovely. That looks great. So there's our soup. You have a nice burger. And if you were to chill this ahead of time, it would be a perfect summer, summer meal. So I hope you guys enjoyed cooking with me today. Um, oh, and show the glaze. Uh, I wanted to see that, what the glaze oh, looks like. Okay, and this is the Trader Joe balsamic glaze. Oh, um, gosh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Any sport, it's great. It has zero fat. Um, and it, it adds tons of flavor. I mean, I do balsamic chicken in it, uh, put it on, you know, grilled peaches, uh, put it with fresh crusty bread and some nice cheeses like Gouda's for an hors d'oeuvre tray. You can do a lot. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Claire. I really appreciate yeah. it. It's good to see you. Great to see you, Claire. Hey, Dr. Gillingham, we appreciate it. We're going to go eat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yes, we will see you guys back. We will have at eight o'clock, once you've gotten the kids to bed and you've enjoyed your dinner, we will have the diagnosis specific um, twilight talk. So if you want to come back and just have some informal conversation with other families or patients, feel free to come back at eight o'clock. Otherwise, we will be back uh, starting at 10 o'clock a.m. with Dr. Peter McGuire. Um, so we will see you soon.